Hey everyone, welcome back to How Stuff in My Car Works, and this is Jade. And if you remember my last video, I had done 14 sample questions on the T7 ASE test. So these sample questions give you more options on what could be on the test, but it also gives you a better success because you have that availability to test your mind. Um, moving forward, it also you know, even if you're not going to be taking this test, you already have obtained this information, it can also help you understand the AC system, like I mentioned before. So, for our first question for today. So, number one says, Technician A says that when installing a new AC compressor, you should turn it over by hand and drain any oil shipped with the unit, and then install the correct amount of oil before installing it. Technician B says that some of the AC compressors are shipped without oil. Who is correct? And your options are A, neither A nor B, B, both A and B, C, A only, or D, B only. <laughs> B, both. A and B. Bingo! <laughs> All right. During a normal AC operation, a loud noise is heard and a cloud of vapor is discharged from underneath the hood. Technician A says that the excessive high side pressure caused the pressure relief valve on the AC compressor to trip as a result of a defective engine cooling fan glitch. Technician B says that the relief valve may have tripped due to a defective shower control solenoid. Who is correct? Well, I don't know, but let's see what the options are. So, A is B only, B A only, C neither A nor B, or D both A and B. Hmm. I'm... Like I said, I like guessing but I haven't gotten it correct the first time, but let's see. I'm going to say B. Yeah, no. Same thing, same thing. D, both A and B. Congrats for the people who got it correct. Thumbs up. <laughs> so three, to check and adjust the AC compressor lubricant level, you must Dot, dot, dot. A. Add refrigerant oil till you can see the oil level. B. Remove the compressor, drain the oil, and then add the correct amount of fresh oil. C. Open the drain plug, let it drain, and then refill it. Or D. Purge the system and add oil charge to refill it. Okay, well, I don't know if I should guess, but <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> so let's see. B, remove, remove the compressor and drain the oil and add the correct amount. Okay. Okay. Alright, number four. What evidence should a technician look for to determine if a vehicle has been retrofitted from an R12 to a R134A? And your options are a retrofit decal is installed on the firewall. So B, the compressor has been replaced. C, the dryer has been replaced. And then D, the caps are missing from the service port. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say B, because it's been B for a while, except for this one, but uh, let's see. Hopefully I'm lucky. <laughs> It's A. A. A retrofit decal on firewall. Alright, this is gonna continue to happen to me. <laughs> Alright, so moving on. So, number five is which is the best method of removing particulate from the AC system after mechanical failure? So, A. Nitrogen flushing. B. An AC flushing solvent in reverse flow, or C, 
R, love and flushing. And D, inline filter. Well, obviously I will not know the answer. <laughs> but hopefully you get it. I really hope so. <laughs> it would be... B, A, C, flush solvent in reverse flow. Hmm. Okay. So, moving on to six. So number six is a whistling noise coming from under the dash while the HVAC system is operating while the blower is on high could be caused by what? So your options are A, a bad connection at the blend door motor. So B, a defective vacuum actuator. So C, a misaligned air duct. So D is an improperly adjusted mode door cable. Mm. That's a hard one. Maybe not for you, but it's pretty hard for me to guess. And it would be B. A misaligned ear duck. <laughs> oh boy. Alright. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun. There's some words I'm having trouble on. <laughs> like I said in my last video, this is I haven't even read any of this, I haven't even read the options here, and I'm just, we're playing it all, so, yeah, just letting you know that. So, number seven is, there is a rumbling noise under the hood when the engine is running, and can be heard with the AC clutch engaged and disengaged. Technician A says that the compressor bearing is defective, but technician B says the clutch bearing is defective. So, the question is... Who is correct? So you have the options A, both A and B, B, neither A or B, C, B only, or D, A only. You know what, and I'm going to guess, and hopefully I'm correct, and I'm going to say A. Please, please. Oh, oh yeah. No. B, neither A or B. Okay, so I was kind of close, you know, but it's still good to keep trying. Not giving up. <laughs> and moving on, eight. So eight, the recommended tool for diagnosing electronic sensors and actuators in an ATC system is... So the options are A, an AC system charging station, B, a digital multimeter, C, an analog multimeter, or D, a 12 volt test light. Mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna guess on this one, but you guys can guess. Um, it's B, the digital multi. So number nine, a band of frost on the AC high pressure hose upstream from the orifice tube indicates. Let's see your options. A, moisture in the system. B, defective compressor discharge valve. So C, a restriction in the high pressure hose. Or D, um, clogged orifice tube. Well, you know, don't give up, so I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna say A. And, it doesn't seem like I'm right. Let's see. Um, restrictions in the high air pressure hose. Well, that's something good to know. A storage container or AC system containing R12 at rest on a ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit will have a pressure of approximately... The options are A, 30 PSI, B, 70 PSI, C, 220 PSI, or D, 125 PSI. Mm, let's see. 
70 KSI. Well, I should have known, hopefully. <laughs> the same number. <laughs> hopefully that means something. <laughs> Alright, 11. A customer complains that he is unable to change the output temperature of his HVAC system. The most likely cause of this problem is... So our options are A. Defective blower switch. B. Clogged orifice tube. C. Broken blend door cables. Or D. Defective compressor discharge valve. Hmm. Um... can be installed using AC charging station. Um, C. Let's see. It's A. A. Refrigerant can be, can be installed through both ports with the engine running. So 13, the refrigerant in an AC system starts changing from liquid to vapor as it flows through. So A, capillator tube, B, vapor line, C, condenser, or D, fixed orifice tubes. when the temperature setting is changed. But the blend door doesn't move. The most likely cause of this problem is dot dot dot. Okay, let's see what it is. Your options are A, defective drive gear in actuator. B, defective control module. C, a defective actuator feedback device. D, Improperly adjusted ATC sensor cable. And because this is the last question, I am going to say A, because hopefully I'm awesome. <gasps> A, defective drive gear in actuators. Woo! Big me! <laughs> and A, you! And A, us! Got it all figured out. So, yay for me, yay for you, yay for us. We are a team. Uh, like I said again, this is definitely something for us to challenge our brains with. Um, very engaging. I love it. Um, it's also very fresh in our minds and something to review if you are taking the T7 ASE test. And if not, remember, this is just another good way to obtain knowledge on the AC system. So stay tuned for next week. I'll be giving out more sample questions for all of you that enjoyed this. And I hope you guys all have a lovely day. Bye.